Hello everyone, today I am introducing you to a Thai drama that has just been released on the internet called Driving Into the Heart of the Matter. The story centers around a manipulative young driver and a gentle doctor. What kind of level spark between the two? Let's find out. The main character, Tra, is a professional doctor dedicated to saving lives. At the moment, he is gently counseling his patients to get plenty of rest. However, the patient across the room stated that he had work to do and finished with a yawn. Draw a yawn along with him as he heard the words with deep empathy. He looked more fatigued than the patient. As soon as the patient left, Troy Saturday paralyzed on the table. He has been working for 38 hours straight without a break. It's not really Troy's duty day, but because a co-worker is sick, the kind-hearted Troy has to fill in for him. At the end of the workday, Troy was finally able to catch his breath. However, when he pulled out his cell phone, he found down scenes of unread messages, all from his sister May, hoping he'd come home for a visit at the end of the month. After a tough call, Troy is about to take a break when he runs into his co-worker Tina, who gushes that she has a new crush on him, but Troy is not interested. Tina ends up with a hangover and a bad case of the jerks. This play seems to have played out several times. However, Tina is convinced that Hans, her target this time, must be the perfect man. Although she wanted to show Troy the pictures, she would have to do it another time because she didn't have her cell phone with her. After dropping off Tina, the elevator door opens and he unexpectedly meets his colleague Bert. For a split second, Troy showed a shy expression as the four eyes met. There was an ambiguous atmosphere in the air, and it seemed that the relationship between these two was not simple. Bert then suddenly mentions that today is the tenth day, and the implication is a bit of a mystery. It all goes back five years. Troy was a college student at the time, and was facing a crisis of being late for finals, even though the exam was very important to him. But the doctor's sense of duty makes Troy resolutely choose to save lives. Just then, Bert descends like an angel. He reassures Troy that he will take the test and he will rescue the older woman. Seeing this, Troy instantly takes a liking to Bert. Afterward, he told Tina about it. Unexpectedly, Tina immediately misplaying Bert's information. Such a gentle and handsome object of desire, of course, cannot be let go. At Tina's urging, Troy prepares elaborate gifts and wants to confess his love. I didn't expect to find out that Bert was already taken. And just like that, Troy's first love was nipped in the bud. He was devastated and decided to keep the crush to himself. It wasn't until five years later that Troy was called by Bert in the hallway, just after his orientation welcome party. The moment he locked eyes, that long-lost heartbeat returned to Troy's heart. Bert said he was glad to be reunited with Troy. As co-workers, they should see each other often in the future. Sure enough, over the next few days, the two often bumped into each other in various corners of the hospital. Bert even made a special delivery of dessert to Troy. The move makes Tina sicker, and he thinks Bert must be courting Troy, but Troy doesn't see it that way. Just as the two are arguing, Bert pops up. He graciously admits his quest and says outright that he wants to talk to Troy. Immediately afterward, the two Saturday in a cafe, faced with Bert's advances, Troy has a surreal feeling and even some low self-esteem. Bert then pulls out ten letters, and he tells Troy to open one a day. Wait until the tenth letter is open before responding to him. Back that night, Troy opened the first letter. Inside it was written, it's me who really likes you, and I'm glad to meet you again. Back in time, Bert asks Troy to meet him at 7.30 tonight, and he's still waiting for Troy's answer. The scene shifts and Mick, the main attacker, comes out. Mick is a motorcycle teenager. At this point, he was driving an elderly and customer down the road in the wind, scaring her old sister-in-law into screaming. Upon arriving at his destination, Mick takes off his mask and reveals a handsome face. At this moment, the old sister-in-law in the back, Seat's legs were soft with fear, and she could barely stand up. Just as Mick gets up to take his next order, he realizes there is something wrong with the car. He then pushed the motorcycle to a rest stop, and after some inspection realized that the conveyor belt had broken. And aside, Brother Joe asks why he doesn't get a new car, but Mick says he can afford it. The brothers next to him look puzzled. Mick obviously has many part-time jobs. How can he have no money? It turns out that Mick not only has to help his mom pay back the money, he also has to cover his girlfriend Rose's tuition. He spent all the money he made. But then the question arises, shouldn't the parents be responsible for the tuition? How come Mick still has to pay for Hannah's schooling? See in this Mick explains that Rose's family is in financial difficulty. The two of them agreed that Rose would be responsible for studying, and he would be responsible for earning money to support the family. It just so happens that today is Rose's birthday and Mick is thinking about what to get her. He sought advice from his brothers, but they were clueless as well. Just then, Rose came over. As soon as they meet, she complains to Mick about the water and power outages in the apartment. Obviously very unhappy with the way things are, Mick is very heartbroken for his girlfriend, but can only promise to move to a better place when he has the money. While waiting for the two to leave, 
The brothers start betting on when the two of them will break up. I can only say that Brother Joe has seen too much with these eyes. He's betting that the two will split in less than three months. On the other side, Mick dropped Rose off at school. He noticed that Rose's backpack was torn and old and was heartbroken. He slipped her another crumpled roll of money. And Rose's first reaction was to look around and see that no one had noticed her before she put it away. Rose had taken more than a few steps when Mick stopped her again and sweetly said happy birthday to her. The scene shifts and Tina is taking an order at a coffee shop. Bye. The new clerk couldn't make the coffee because the order was so complicated. Well, it didn't take long for Young, the store manager, to return to the register. Just as Tina was looking down at her cell phone, Young watched her surreptitiously as he skillfully completed the order. After getting her coffee, Tina took a deep breath for her. Being able to smell the coffee was bliss. It's only after Tina leaves that Young says he's happy to see Tina too. Blythe, who was on the sidelines, immediately came over to gossip. No wonder Young doesn't complain a word about that complicated coffee. So he has a crush on Tina. On the other side, Tony, a medical school intern, stayed up late last night to watch the game. He ended up being late for a clinical lab class and he was given a very stern lecture by Ben, his senior. Ben then asked Tony to tell us about Bat-6. Tony was prepared and had a case ready. I didn't realize the case happened to be written by Ben. It was also too embarrassing for him to be caught plagiarizing by his master. Tony was defiant after class, in the hallway, exaggeratedly mimicking what Ben just did in passing, spitting on his disguise. Unexpectedly, that's when Ben came up behind them, and his best friend immediately winked and reminded Tony. But Tony was too involved to notice at all, until Ben couldn't listen any longer and interrupted him with a voice. Looking at the other party's icy gaze, Tony then panicked a bit. After all, Ben Steele has to write his final review. It seems that this happy couple is the sub-conspirator of the drama. The scene shifts. Mick looked at the new bag and solemnly put it in a gift box with a bow. The cake was then carefully kindled. That's the surprise he had in store for Rose. However, Mick waited until it was dark. Rose did not come home, and the message sent to the other side did not return. Well, it wasn't long before Rose's figure finally appeared downstairs. Seeing this, Mick immediately turned off the lights and carried the cake behind the wall. He waited for Rose to enter before he walked out singing his birthday song. I didn't expect Rose's expression to be heavy instead of happy. She also had a brand new designer bag on her back at some point. Seeing this, Mick realized a hint of something wrong. Back on Troy's side, at the moment he was at the restaurant as promised. Bert has been waiting for a long time, and the ambiguity is unmistakable. Bert talks about love, while asking Troy if he read the letter all the way through. Troy instantly recalled the joy of opening the letter. The encounter with Bert also flashed through his mind in a flash. While Troy on one side has a love interest, Mick on the other side is facing a breakup. It turns out that Rose has suffered through her current misery, and all she wants for her birthday is to break up with Mick. At the fancy restaurant, Bert gently takes Troy's hand and confesses his love for him again. He wants Troy to be with him. Mick inquired incredulously from the dilapidated rental house. He's having trouble accepting the fact that he's going to break up. With that, Troy happily agrees to Bert's advances and officially has a love affair. And once again, Rose asks for a breakup and turns away without a second thought. Same time and space. One planning for the future. One planning to leave. Some are happy and some are sad. Troy's love has just begun and mixes over. But the end may be for a new beginning. The next day, the well-informed brother, Joe, immediately came to ask for the bet. That's when everyone realized Mick had broken up. Mick then comes over to work as usual. And a few people immediately square off caring about Mick's condition in the process. In contrast, Mick is nothing out of the ordinary, and instead, everyone looks less normal. In order to take care of his lost brother, since he heartily gave up his old sister-in-law customer to him, frightened, his old sister-in-law blushes, and a distraught Mick rampages down the road. He also knocked his old sister-in-law's knees out in several places. Just then, a familiar voice sends Mick into cardiac arrest. That's how fate works. Rose, who just broke up with him yesterday, is now in her car making out with the limo guy. Mick is furious and goes up to the limo guy and calls him out and fights him. Seeing that she couldn't stop Mick, Rose slaps him straight across the face. He breaks down and yells out, hoping Mick will leave her alone and let her find a good man. With that she left with the limo guy, leaving Mick alone and still frowsing in place. By the end of the night, Mick was still having trouble letting go. Just as he was shedding tears for love, a gentle voice suddenly appeared beside his ear. Yes, this man is Troy who wants a cab. Seeing the look on Mick's face, Troy frowns he hesitantly asked the other man if he needed help. The two just stared at each other, the neon lights flashing on the street corner, and it was a faded meeting, and offered them to Troy, in full view of the crowd. Looking at Troy's happy face, Mick actually felt a twinge of loss in his heart. After the three-person Shura event at the Thanksgiving party, 
Joy takes it upon himself to introduce Mick to his boyfriend, but Bert isn't friendly. He doesn't want to see Troy close to anyone else and hopes that Troy will draw the line at outsiders in the future. At that Mick lowered his head at once on not letting Troy go upstairs when confronted with Bert's misbehavior. Simple Troy doesn't suspect a thing. By the time Bert got upstairs, a pair of burly hands were on his shoulders. Turns out he's got a honk hiding in his house. No wonder he won't let Troy in. Poor Troy didn't know anything about it. In the internal medicine room, Troy put his white coat in the closet and his thoughts drifted away with it. Thinking of all the coldness his boyfriend had shown him, he remembered Tina's suggestion that he should transfer his shift to be with his boyfriend. He naively thought that Bert was angry because he'd been stood up. He had to spend more time with Bert to make up for his thoughts. By this point, Troy was immediately back in his white coat and determined to work more. He's going to take a full day to accompany Bert to the Water Lantern Festival. In this way, Troy is like a gyroscope in the internal medicine department, checking in on patients and examining them at the same time. The scene shifts and Uncle Two is very angry, as he looks at the older man on the couch who has fallen asleep and died. Obviously, I had an appointment to go to the hospital today for a health checkup, and now I have to be late again. Mick comes sniffing around, but can't change the fact that the two are arguing. He so helplessly stated that he would go ahead and call a cab. That's when Uncle To noticed the suspicion and asked his nephew why he didn't go on a motorcycle run today. Mick excuses himself by accompanying his uncle for a checkup, but his unnatural expression still made the uncles notice something. The two looked at each other silently for a second, then continued to bicker, whether intentionally or not. Mick sends the uncles to the hospital where Troy works. Having arrived too late, they had to queue up at the back. Uncle To grumbled again, and Uncle One wouldn't back down. The two of them spoke to each other, their volume gradually rising, causing the people around them to turn around. Mick rushes in to control the position. He told his uncles to wait nicely and went to the bathroom himself. Within a few steps, Mick saw Troy in the hallway, but at this point, Troy is covering his head and looking shaken, realizing that something is wrong. Mick rushes over and hugs the fainting Troy. He and shouted for a doctor. After adjusting, Troy woke up and the first thing he saw was Mick's anxious face. After making sure Troy was okay, he left leaving the two alone. Puzzled, Mick asks Troy why he fainted, after he learns that Troy worked 70 hours straight to save time for a date with Bert. Mick's my frowsy instantly. He was more heartbroken than jealous. He tells Troy that loving himself is a prerequisite for loving others. Immediately afterward, Mick got up to go get Troy something to pat his stomach. Just as he was about to leave, his uncle caught to him from behind. Mick introduces Troy to his uncles, incidentally taking on the task of buying dinner on his own. After the nephew left, the uncles gossip to Troy. They learn that the other man often rides on Mick's motorcycle. The two instantly remembered what their nephew had said earlier about the doctor's passenger and silently smiled at each other. The scene shifts and Mick is agonizing over what he should buy Troy. He wanted to buy exquisite nutritional products, but he was afraid that the other party would find them too ostentatious. After much hesitation, he opted for regular food. After all, liking is indulgence, but love is restraint. While checking out Mick got a call from his uncle and he went straight to the internal medicine room. Turns out Troy gave his uncle a direct checkup. Its results were okay, except for some high blood sugar. At that, Uncle Two was relieved, but his mouth was sarcastic about Uncle One, and the two of them instantly ignited the war again. After the smoke subsided, Mick carefully handed Troy his meal and the other man returned the favor. The uncles immediately solidified their nephew's gossip in their minds. After the examination, the uncle grilled his nephew about Troy, looking at Mick's bright eyes as he told him. The older man remembered when he was in love. Seeing that the atmosphere was not right, Mick hurriedly stated that he was straight. Unexpectedly, Uncle smiled lightly and stated that love can cross gender. Seeing this Mick was silent, lost in thought. On the other side, the doctors finished their course of evaluating the patients. Ben was just about to leave when Tommy coughed a few times, stating that he wanted to see the other side with iced water. As Tommy flipped through the ugly photos on his phone and made a show of sharing them, Ben, help us grits his teeth and serves the iced water. Before he could sit down, the other party made a new request. After three times, Tony got the better of him and pulled out a bottle of moisturizer for Ben to apply for him. Ben is furious, but compromises under the threat of being sent ugly pictures. He had to slap Tony's face with contained anger. On the way back, Tony continued to be anemic. Suddenly a balloon explodes, startling Ben. He covered his ears tightly and looked very scared. Tony frowns as well, but this time he didn't laugh at Ben but inquired about the other man with concern. By the end of the night, Troy is complaining to Tina about his feelings. Bert hasn't returned his messages for three days. Seeing that Tina guessed that Bert should be busy at work, but he's a dentist, it's not like he's working overtime. The two naturally chatted about the Water Lantern Festival.
Learning that Troy hadn't invited each other yet, Tina urged her best friend to let her know ahead of time. The next day, Troy does as he's told, only for Bert to decline again. Citing handling work, Troy's expression was very downcast at the sight. That's when Tina again persuades Troy to reach out to Bert and do something for the other guy. She became more and more emotional and put her hands on the other woman's shoulders. Just then Ken pushes his way in and sees the two in an awkward position and rushes to say he has no intention of interrupting. Seeing this, Tina pulls her best friend and flees in a hurry. Thanks to Troy, by the way, for taking her home when she was drunk. Unexpectedly, Troy said that he was not the one who helped that day and Tina was suddenly puzzled. The next moment, Troy takes his best friend to the coffee shop to say thank you to Young. Tina asks Young why he didn't tell her about that day. Young says it's nothing and light around him desperately tries to explain it for him. Looking at the man in front of her, Tina asked if there was anything he wanted in return. Young hesitated for half a second, seeing the other man turn to leave, before finally blurting out the idea shyly. Troy takes the coffee to Bert's unit, only to be told by the nurse that the other man has gone back. He picked up the phone and got another extremely perfunctory answer. Because Bert on the other end of the line is having a candlelit dinner with someone else, you and me, on the other side, Mick sits under a big tree and looks at the happy boy-girl couple on the side of the road. He recalled his uncle's insights about love, so engrossed was he in his thoughts that Troy called out to him several times before he came back to his senses. Troy said he was in a bad mood and didn't want to go home. Mick thought for a moment and took him to the beach. On the bridge, the two are caught up in the gentle ocean breeze, and Troy is finally amused by Mick's lame jokes. He caressed the other man's small arm and expressed his gratitude to him. The warmth of his hand came through and instantly made Mick's heart raise. That's when Troy opens up about the love that has an agonizing over it. Mick says he can accompany him to the Water Lantern Festival as a friend. The scene shifts and Ben is struggling to explain the points to Tony. Instead, the other guy was leisurely playing with his cell phone. Ben is about to pack up and leave when Tony suggests going to the Water Lantern Festival event together. Ben wanted to refuse, but agreed under threat. In the flashing lights, Mick and Troy surged with the lively crowd. Although they came from different hometowns, they still gathered here. It's probably destiny. Suddenly, a gust of wind blows a foreign object into Mick's eye. Mick doesn't feel like rubbing his hands together and Troy rushes to stop it. He tenderly cupped the other man's face and gently blew on it. To ease the awkwardness, Mick offers Troy to bring in and follow him himself. Unlike Bert's morally kidnapped love, Troy seems to be the dominant one in this relationship. Even when the two bought popsicles, Troy took the initiative to get his favorite flavor for the other. The two continue to open up as they walk and talk. Troy describes the frustration of working alone in a foreign country and being so busy that he doesn't have time to go home. Meek says he followed his girlfriend here, but he's now broken up. That's when Tina Saturday down at the table and drifted into a vision of Troy, seeing the many game vendors out front. Troy suggested a game of balloon tying. Meek takes a stab at it, and Troy, with his hands on him, throws the gun right at the boss. Seeing this the two hurriedly apologized. Just then, Mick caught sight of Rose and her new love interest, and his expression immediately changed. Seeing Mick's anxious and chagrined look, Troy had guessed the reason for the relationship breakup. He had just been relieved, and now he was comforting Mick. The two just healed each other and grew together. In the detours of relationships, one becomes more and more aware of loving oneself and the meaning of true love. It's a moment where all the hurt from the ex-girlfriend seems to be healed by Troy. They continued on and saw the glittering Ferris wheel. Troy goes to buy tickets for two, but Mick anxiously refuses. Troy tells Mick not to keep repressing himself and to try to get to the highest point and see the view in the distance. With constant persuasion from the other side, Mick was taken into the Morrisons, just as the two sailed together to higher ground. Enjoying the splendor, Ben and Tony walk under the Ferris wheel. Seeing a balloon stand in the distance, Ben pulls Tony in to try to make a detour. Before Tony could say anything, Ben ran off, looking at this timid look. Tony unexpectedly found the other party somewhat cute. On the Ferris wheel, Troy happily enjoys the view and Mick looks nervous. He finally revealed the fact that he was afraid of heights. Seeing this Troy gently held the other man's head, so Mick wouldn't look down. He just needs to look himself in the eye flatly. At this moment, looking into the naked eyes of his beloved, Mick couldn't hold back any longer. With a firm gaze, he mustered up the courage to say I like you to Troy. At the highest point of the Ferris wheel, Mick finally builds up the courage to confess to Troy. The reality, however, is that looking at the suddenly fixed Mick, Troy gently wakes the other man up. Turns out it was all just Mick's fantasy. Looking at Troy in front of him, Mick suddenly realized that liking someone is gender neutral. The Ferris wheel soon landed and the two ended the program. The scene changes to show brother Joe with his two youngest brothers. Also arriving at the Water Lantern Festival, they were fancy clothes, had confident expressions, uninhibited movements, and were full of shit. 
but they didn't come here to pick up girls this time. The three were confident that they were going to teach the game vendor a lesson. Arriving at the booth, the trio was greenlit all the way. Whether they were smashing cans or zipping balloons, they were like they were on a roll and took a ton of prizes. The beautiful woman in the cage also fell in the water five times. The trio's high profile caused a side of punks to get upset. Choi and Mick unknowingly arrive at the booth selling water lanterns. Choi proposes to put out water lanterns together. But Mick is a little hesitant because usually only lovers put them together. But looking at the other's sincere eyes, Mick immediately loosened up again. So, one of them lit the fire, the other one held the lamp carrying their good wishes of the water lantern gradually floating away. On the other side of the room, little kids run by wrestling firecrackers, and Tony subconsciously covers Ben's ears. <laughs> Meanwhile, to celebrate their victory, Brother Joe and his men bought a lot of popsicles and distributed them to Passersby. Such high-profile behavior again drew the ire of the punks, and the other kicked their popsicles away. Brother Joe immediately went up to the theory, when Tina and Young also came to the water lantern stall. On the other side, the two waves decided to split up with Airsoft and whoever lost would make a kneeling board for the other's feet. After a few rounds, Brother Joe's group won, but the punks couldn't swallow it and pulled out their guns. The two sides scuffled, and in the confusion, other gangs were joined. The group fought harder and harder, causing extreme chaos. During the water lantern, Tina makes a wish that she will meet the right person. Afterward, Young worked up the courage to ask if he could do the role. Before they could wait for an answer, a gunshot came and the two men rushed to flee the scene. Mick and Troy join the escape party. In the midst of the chaos, Troy saves a young boy who is left alone and ends up getting separated from Mick. Realizing something is wrong, Mick rushes back to look for Troy, but accidentally sees Bert. He was a little confused and thought the other man had come here because he was worried about Troy. I didn't realize that immediately afterward, Bert was cuddling with another man. Mick's pupils quake at once, and the next second Bert turns his head to see him, too, and his whole body freezes. At that moment, a firebolt was thrown at Troy, who immediately crouched down to shield the little boy, and then collapsed right to the ground from the shot. Tony discerned his medical history from the situation, and rushed to start some rescue using a paper bag. Finally out of the chaos, Young brings up again the question that hasn't been answered. Tina, however, politely declined. He was so disheartened that he had to leave alone. Looking at the other's lost back, Tina hesitated again. After picking his way through a circle of people, Mick finally found Troy holding the boy. Mick breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that the other man was safe. The little boy also had only a minor head injury, and it wasn't long before his grandmother found him. With a little trickery on Mick's part, the injured little boy dutifully made his way to the ambulance. Back at Ben's house, Tony complains about why Ben was so dead set on not telling him about his phobia ahead of time. Stubborn Ben, however, is cold in his words, and Tony has no choice but to slam the door after an indignant expression of concern. The relationship between the two spoke to the freezing point. The scene changes to show Mick bringing in a bottle of mineral water and helping Troy carefully wash the dirt off his hands. The touch of skin on skin made both of them a little shy. The chaos made their feelings more purely good and deep. Mick goes to buy water again, and suddenly Troy sees a familiar figure. He went up to check if Bert was okay with concern, but the other man was very cold. Troy cathartically pounced on him, but Babe pushed him away. Mick returns from buying water when the hospital recall call comes in. Personal feelings have to be hidden before saving lives. After a moment of emergency resuscitation, Troy Saturday on the steps, alone and distraught, and Mick Saturday silently over. His gentleness was like a lifesaver, and Troy didn't hold back, falling into Mick's arms and crying out in pain. It was a moment of mutual solace for two lonely souls. Mick suspects that Bert is cheating on him, and squats downstairs with Brother Joe. Sure enough, they saw Bert and a third party making out. Mick couldn't press the issue any longer, and went up to argue with his opponent. However, Bert also perked up as an old scumbag. This farce ended with Bird's indignant departure. Afterward, Troy went to the dentist to find his boyfriend and, not surprisingly, pounced again. On the other hand, Tony arrives at the lab class and Ben is nowhere to be found. His heart was empty, and he realized he couldn't help but focus on him anymore. In the office, Troy tells Tina about these days. In his subconscious, although very sad, he still thinks he hasn't broken up yet. Tina advises him to make quick work of it, and that it's best to get it over with. After class, Tony found out from his schoolmates that Ben had taken a leave of absence to go to the doctor. He went to the relevant department and learned that Ben's phobia was related to him being overly aggressive and stressed out. Tony is seen by Ben who pushes his way in. He was busy claiming that he had come to ask a medical question and happened to be passing by. Instead, the other side said they would be volunteering to request a transfer. Looking at Ben's thing back, Tony felt very distressed. On the other hand, 
Meg is haunted by the question of whether or not he was being too presumptuous. Joe's brother sees through it all and advises him not to get into deed so he doesn't get his feelings hurt again. At that, Meg was lost in thought. At the coffee shop, Mike gossips to her brother about last night's date. At that moment, Tina came in and the atmosphere was a bit subtle. She asked for a cup of coffee, but it tasted a little strange. Jan accidentally spilled his coffee while he was checking it out. Tina asked him if he wasn't satisfied with yesterday's answer. Jan smiled and pretended to be calm, chuckling to himself that he should have expected this outcome. Troy comes to the moto area, as usual and Mick carts off like a mouse to a cat. Troy didn't understand and had to get in Brother Joe's car. Brother Joe winds up screaming in terror. Mick pulls the takeout out of the wagon and looks up only to meet his ex-girlfriend's eyes. The to sit on a flower and Rose asks how Mick is doing. After chatting for a few moments, Rose offered to give Mick his exclusive helmet back. The next moment, Brother Joe leads Troy to Bert's apartment. At this point, Bert is upstairs making out with another man. Troy hesitated for a moment and decided to go upstairs to him. After hearing a noise inside, Troy pounded on the door. Bert was already upset when his two-person world was shattered. Looking at the other man's infatuated look made him even more bored. Troy whimpered and tried to get in the house, even making a point of reviewing it. As it turned out, of course, Troy was again rejected. Meanwhile, Tony finds Ben, voluntarily deletes the scandalous photos, and admits his mistake. He said he'd be happy to help the other man cure his phobia and break the bar. Looking into the other man's sincere eyes, Ben nodded gently. In the lounge area, everyone gossips when they see that Mick has his ex-girlfriend's helmet back. Mick, however, bluntly stated that he was completely over it. The crowd asked him again if he had a new love interest, and brother Joe said Troy's name. Mick hurriedly blurted out a denial, but his unnatural expression betrayed him. Amidst the talk and laughter, Miss Amy walked slowly. Brother Joe didn't run away this time. He was generous with his passengers and gave his helmet to Miss Amy. This time he loved more bravely. At Bert's house, the new boyfriend is complaining. Why don't you take this opportunity to talk to Troy? Why drag it out and hang on both sides? Bert makes up some more grandiose excuses, but it's clear the other guy isn't having any of it. The two had to be separated. Mick drops his guest off at the river and happens to see Troy, who is alone and sad, watching the other man blame himself. Mick sends gentle encouragement. Troy offered to go for a ride together and held on to his partner's arm to pamper him. Mick, of course, nodded in agreement and arrives at Skate Plaza and is confronted with Tony's offer which he initially refuses. Tony takes a step-by-step -step approach and encourages the other person to make bold gestures. And so it was with Tony's hand-holding that Ben finally got on his skateboard. They stumble. Tony rushed to put his arm around his waist, and the two of them looked at each other, Ben blushing with shame. Finally, he felt the joy of skateboarding and smiled a stretched smile. Tony also breathed a sigh of relief to teenagers Saturday side by side on the shimmering river. The smell of spring in the air. It's close in time and Young puts the clothes for business sign on the door. Tina enters the store and asks for a cup of coffee, and then to sit down face to face and open up. Tina states that she is cheerful on the outside, but is actually a love-starved girl on the inside. She longed for love yet feared getting just that. One is a girl, who is strong on the outside and weak on the inside, and the other is a gentle, introverted man. Their meeting seemed like a match made in heaven and the process was less than smooth. Troy Saturday in the front seat gripping the handle, while Mick patiently instructed from the back seat. The motorcycle drove slowly, the sunlight spilling over the smiling faces of the two men. However, cartwheels are always caught off guard. An accidental rock tripped the mojo. The two fell in an ambiguous position. Troy was very worried when he saw Mick's wounds. Mick is busy saying it's fine, but still wears a pain mask while he's being medicated. Mick's heart races as he looks at his virtuous sweetheart in front of him. His face came closer and closer and closer. The scene shifts and Mick returns home to find a band-aid for his wound. Uncle Junior was worried when he saw it. But both men laughed when they learned that they had fallen because they were teaching the doctor how to ride a motorcycle. They see through Mick's fondness for Troy as people who have been there. Originally, Mick didn't believe it. But when it was late at night, he was doubly happy when he thought back on all that had happened since he and the doctor had met. His heart was also rapidly racing, which made him realize that he seemed to really like Troy. And at the same time, Troy's heart was racing wildly. Is this a heart to heart? But that's when he sees the note that scumbag Bert once wrote to himself. So in a calm mood, he sent him a love it of a text and Bert didn't get back to him until the next day. That's when the nurse's sister told Troy that a gentleman named Frank had asked for Troy by name. Frank's problem. On the other hand, is a cheating boyfriend. On the other hand, Mick is at home watching to leave uncles having a love fest. It made him a little curious about the emotional affairs of his uncles. But this is going to be a good talk. At one time, both uncles had girlfriends. 
but the older one's girlfriend ran off with someone else. Uncle Tu is even worse. His girlfriend is pregnant with someone else's child and he has to pay the girl. The uncles are heartbroken by each other's experiences and the to fall in love. Joy, meanwhile, is planning to go to Bert at this point, but runs into Frank at the door. Frank tells Joy that his boyfriend has finally decided to say goodbye to the third party, but then Mick arrives at the hospital as well and he's a little unnerved when he sees Frank. Mick didn't say much though. His purpose today was to come and deliver love to Tiny. After Mick leaves, Troy opens the lunchbox, but to his surprise, it's topped with a number of chicken hearts. It made him ask Mick what it was, and Mick sees the picture of the doctor, and remembers the famous scenes of love that his uncles recounted to him. When the first uncle brought food to the second uncle every day, it was the same chicken heart and oil rice, but when Uncle Tu went to buy food one day, he realized there was no chicken heart there. That's when he realized that the chicken hearts were bought by the uncle, who had traveled thousands of miles to buy them elsewhere. It also proves the other side's intentions, so the two understood each other's feelings and established a relationship. Mick copies their results directly from his uncles and tells Troy the meaning. To Troy's delight, this heartfelt chicken heart while Rice managed to serve its purpose. At that moment, Tina walked in and was curious to see the box full of chicken hearts, but then she smiles meaningfully when she learns it's Mick's doing. But when Troy talked about what would happen if he and Mick got together, again, Tina seems to think it's not a good match. After all, it's a doctor and a motorcycle boy. But ask Tina to think about it. Do a doctor and a coffee vendor sound like a good match? But Jan, the coffee shop manager, is actually still hot. At this time, he was being interviewed. He remembered his original intention of opening a coffee shop here. That is, to make delicious coffee for the hardworking doctors, nurses and, of course, Tina. On the other side, the interns finished their day, but instead of going with his friends, Tony went to find Ben. He's taking Ben to sports, he's taking care of him, and Ben smiles coyly and nods in agreement. And Troy, at this point, was buying bread when Bert showed up. When he saw Troy, he didn't say anything, just turned away. Troy carries the bread he just bought to Mick and brother Joe and the others. He returned for chicken heart and oil rice for lunch, but when he's alone with Mick, he gets a text from Frank. Do out, it says that your boyfriend has a boyfriend or something of unclear meaning. It makes Troy wonder if Frank's boyfriend is Bert. But Mick, who knew the truth, didn't have the heart to say it. He just reassured the doctor and invited him to ride again. It's only the second time. But Troy wasn't wrestling today. And Mick doesn't mince words of praise. The two were in perfect harmony. I don't know if the two were doing it on purpose. But the motorcycle ended up stopping in front of the temple. The older woman at the door takes one look at Troy and tells him straight that he's not in a good relationship. But that's okay. He'll have a year down the road. And that's true love. And Mick snickered when he heard that and asked how old Troy was. The two walked together on the path in the evening breeze after worshipping the Buddha. The doctor thanks Mick again for saving his life. More than that, it's because Mick makes himself especially comfortable. The atmosphere was great and the night was beautiful. Neither hesitated this time, confirming each other's eyes and kissing. Don't get excited yet. The above plot is purely Mick's self-imagination. Still, the way he giggled made Troy look happy. But then Frank's text message comes back and this time names Bert by name. He invites Troy to witness the truth. Mick also sees the text and doesn't want Troy to go and get hurt, urging him not to go. But Troy, he's had enough. He's going to find the truth. So in the pouring rain, the two rode toward where Frank said they would be. On the other side, due to heavy rain plus injuries, Tony is stuck at Ben's house. But the obsessive compulsive school teacher can't stand it when someone goes through his stuff. When Tony learns of this, he intensifies the situation and messes up the house. Ben was going crazy, babbling on and on. And Tony managed to shut the senior up with a straight kiss, but was soon kicked out by the senior as well. But that's okay. Ben blushed behind the door and didn't slow down for a long time. Mick drops Troy off at the apartment and tries to follow him up there as well. But Troy feels it's his business to work things out on his own. So he doesn't agree. Troy came alone to the room. Frank said he was in and pushed the door open. Lying on the bed was none other than her boyfriend and Frank. Troy is furious, but Bert surprises Troy by telling him that he likes him. It's just that in Troy's life, Work is more important, so there's no way to fulfill himself. Frank is also an up man out. He tells Troy that this bird does this every time, but eventually comes back to himself. Sure enough Frank and Bert are still a match for you too. And Mick downstairs waited for Troy for a long time. He was so anxious that he wanted to rush up when Troy came down disoriented. Along comes Bert, who is chasing after him. And Mick is furious. He swung and fought the scum until security came over. Troy cried out before the two men withdrew their hands. Although Troy helped Mick with his wounds, he was still deeply concerned about the other man's secrecy about the matter. So walking silently in the rain by himself, perhaps the shock was too much and he fainted. And Mick arrived later and carried Troy home. The first and second uncles look at it, 
This won't work. The doctor has to change his clothes. So who's going to replace him? It's not Mick, of course. So a shy Mick carried Troy back to his room. And he was extremely shy and hesitant to do it, even covering his eyes. But when he touched where he shouldn't have, he gave up closing his eyes and dutifully stripped the doctor naked. Here comes the next shy part. Should I take off my pants? Don't tell me. The kid was thoughtful enough to think of that. So he gritted his teeth and stomped his foot. And the doctor was naked all over. And the doctor, who doesn't wake up early or late, just suddenly wakes up in the light of day, startling Mick. But after all this fuss, Troy was in a much better mood. And he cooked delicious food for Mick. After such an exciting night, only food can soothe a broken heart. And Troy said he forgave Mick for hiding things, because even I would have done it myself. After dinner Troy plans to leave, but Mick is a little uneasy, not to mention it's raining. He then kept Troy to live here. Sure enough late into the night, Troy finally couldn't help but turn his back on him and cry very hard. Everyone woke up early the next morning. Mick uses himself as an example to tell Troy that a breakup hurts, but it will pass, and the best way to do that is to find a new relationship. Uncle Junior was simply a godsend, appearing out of nowhere just at that moment, and they told Troy that the new object is across the street from Yuya. Troy, who just had his romance fall out, looked at this old CP and was really envious, so he asked for advice on the secret of keeping the two together into old age, and Uncle Junior didn't say anything else but to words of loyalty because the reason for being together is love, but it's still loyalty that gets you to the end, not bad for an old companion, just the right amount of damage. On the other side, Ben and Tony's relationship has come to a crossroads. Senpai doesn't like these accidents in life, so Tony, also angry, left harsh words and turned around. Troy came to the hospital but was distracted. Tina sees this and asks and learns about Bert. Scumbag scumbags for all. Tina is furious and wants to delete Troy's cell phone messages about each other. But Troy wants to do it himself, and Mick is still worried after taking Troy to the hospital, so he came to the hospital again, under the pretext of delivering refreshments. But this time, the sister nurse told him Troy didn't show up for work. Although he didn't see Troy, Mick looked up and saw Bert. The two almost fought again when their love rivals met, but it was a hospital, so they had to stop. Troy, meanwhile, is on the rooftop at the moment, looking at Bert's contact info and debating whether to delete it or not. That said, Mick goes to Troy and meets scumbag Bert. So he has a fight and comes back. Brother Joe and the others took one look at Mick in such a situation and comforted him, but also stated a fact. That's where the doctor and the doctor might be a little more compatible. On the other hand, Ben is shopping at the grocery store when he hears someone talking about Tony's wounds. It worried him. So after the two broke up, he decided to visit him anyway. And Tony's got a big temper and he's determined not to destroy his senior safe zone again. So without accepting the other man's condolences, he talked Ben back and Mick hasn't been able to reach Troy until now. It worried him so much that he even started brainstorming. But thankfully, this is Troy calling him back. It turns out that in an effort to heal, Troy made the journey home and used the vacation time he had saved up for the scum. His family was waiting for him at the door, and they were all very happy to see Troy. The family was finally able to meet face to face and eat delicious food together. After dinner, Troy silently scrubbed the dishes in the kitchen. But in fact, his sister saw all of his dissimilarities in her eyes. And as Troy's family, we just want him to be able to be himself at home and not have to force a smile. Troy heard his sister reassure him in this way. He finally couldn't contain his sadness as he hugged his sister and cried out. When her brother was done crying, her sister began to ask Troy what had happened. But she could guess it had something to do with men. My sister advised Troy that sometimes it's the right feet that counts. Hearing this, Troy's mind drifted to Mick. So he hurriedly took out his cell phone. And while Mick did call him a lot, the two finally reconnected. Mick is no longer shy but instead is direct about how much he misses the doctor, and Troy couldn't help but laugh. After that phone call, the doctor who had decided to stay home for a week quickly changed his mind. Two days later, it was the end of the journey at home, and came to Mick with a bunch of specialties. But who knew that before Mick showed up, Mick's oldest child, Matt, would show up. Now the doctor is confused. Is my relationship that bumpy? And Mick, seeing the doctor's confusion, doesn't explain much, instead dragging him off to get his son some food. Now Troy couldn't help himself and asked out politely anyway. At first Mick wanted to keep teasing the cute doctor. Still, seeing him flustered and uncomprehending, Mick couldn't bear it. He told Troy the truth about what happened. It turns out that Matt is the son of his own brother, who is unlucky and his sister-in-law is long dead. It took Mick to take on that responsibility. And Troy is greatly relieved to hear that Mick didn't get married early and has a child out of wedlock. After buying food, the two return to the garage. Matt is bargaining with Uncle too. And when he sees Mick coming back, he doesn't want to do his homework, 
it was hard for him to get out, so of course he had to go out and play, and in this case, of course, the doctor will be traveling with you. It was a godsend. The three arrive at the amusement park, and the thrills while mad, but give Mickey a headache. It wasn't an old arm and a leg, but he admitted defeat, so he turned his head to get ice cream. At this point Matt was curious and asked the doctor, how could a biker like your own dad have a doctor friend? And Troy told the kids, Mick is really a very nice guy and one feels especially comfortable with him. Next the group went to Dinosaur Land. The complexity of the knowledge has overwhelmed Mick's ability to answer, but he's got a doctor friend, so that easily solves the problem Matt brought up. Finally the laborious day was over. The trio returned home while Matt had long since fallen asleep. Troy couldn't help but marvel at how hard it was to raise a child and Mick surprisingly started to express it directly, opening up with do you want to be a father to your child a father, and Troy was so teased and shy, and felt it was too soon, that he decided to just be an uncle for the time being, having said that, Troy has had the realization of being another dad, when I got home I hit the computer and looked up Matt's course needs, and Mick was at that moment, looking at his son's sleeping face and thinking about the doctor, but the next second, his ex-girlfriend sent him a text message inviting him to meet, the scene shifts, and Ben sees Tony walking out of the leader's office. He was worried that the other man would complain about his dissatisfaction and that it would affect the matter of staying and working at the hospital. So he walked in and sidestepped to ask, but the leader didn't hold back at all and told Ben all that Tony had said. It turns out Tony didn't sue, but instead learned how much the seniors cared for their younger siblings. The leaders are also very happy with this. The next day, Troy arrived at Mick's house with his lesson notes ready for Matt, but at that moment, surprisingly, a girl was crying in his arms. Troy is shocked that this is Mick's ex-girlfriend. She goes so far as to ask who the doctor is, and Mick goes so far as to introduce Troy as a regular friend. And as soon as Troy heard this, he lied about something at the hospital and wanted to leave, but the instructional materials prepared for Matt hit the ground running. The situation was a bit of a mess. Mick is once again stopped by his ex-girlfriend when he tries to go after the doctor. And this amazing ex-girlfriend, surprisingly, wants to go back to the old days with Mick. And Mick doesn't say no. And once again, the emotionally wounded doctor returns to the office to comfort each other with Tina, who is also emotionally frustrated. Ben, on the other hand, once again comes to the place where Tommy took him skateboarding. Looking at everyone, he made a new decision. He was seen rushing into the classroom where Tony was teaching. He borrows a microphone from the professor and seriously apologizes to Tony and confesses his love. And Tony looked at Ben with such sincerity. He agreed to his advances to the upper of his classmates. Mick sends Matt back to his grandmother's house and peace returns to the house. But there's one other thing the uncles are curious about, and that's the Mick ex-girlfriend incident. What is this lady doing back here? And Mick doesn't hold back, telling his uncle that he was trying to come back to get back together, but he didn't agree to it. What? You didn't agree? You said the doctor was a casual friend. A little skeptical of Mick's emotional intelligence though. Is that worth having a boyfriend for? In the hospital Tina came to the cafe again, but this time she ordered the coffees. Turns out she'd asked her blind date to come here with her. But this blind date was also a polarizing one. Typical thug, switching from disliking coffee to showing off his watch with ease. Tina also finally reached the limit of her patience at the other party's exaggerated behavior and simply left. This time Young isn't waiting. Instead he goes after them. He gives Tina the Meccano he brought from Japan and finally makes his confession clear. Great move by Tina. Toe, not only does it make Young jealous, but it also finally reaps the benefits of a two-timing boyfriend. While watching the couples come together one by one, Troy submits his resignation from the hospital. So, coming to the doctor, after Mick had sorted out his side of the mess, was no longer to be found. And Tina, seeing Mick's anxiousness, still tells him that Troy went back home. This time Mick didn't help out with another assist. He very voluntarily went home to change his four-wheeler and set out to find Troy. Mick finally arrives in favor of Troy's hometown, but the car runs out of gas. Luckily, he met a local villager who dropped him off in front of Troy's family's restaurant, but the restaurant wasn't open today either. So, unwilling to retreat, Mick climbs up the gate and tries to tumble in, but didn't want May to come out and catch him at this point. My sister knew as soon as she heard that Mick was here for her brother. He's the one responsible for making Troy sad. She intends to punish Mick. So May told Mick that Troy was 20 kilometers away and still had to run, and Mick couldn't care less and actually did run over. The road to Troy was endless, and Mick was sweating. That's when three motorcycles appear from behind. It's brother Joe with his minions coming to support Mick. And with their help, Mick finally managed to reach his destination to see Troy. Troy was surprised by this too. But Mick wasn't waiting around. He straight up put together what happened between himself and his ex-girlfriend. And he seriously and formally confesses his love for Troy. And Troy is finally in love. 
the two embraced and kissed in the midst of this wonderful view. The scene shifts and the new year is quickly approaching. In the hospital Tina and Young are hot in love, and Tony and Ben are no slouches either. Everyone had a sweet romance and Mick and Troy were no exception. Even Mick, under the influence of his doctor, decides to start over and go to college so that he could take better care of Troy. And that was the final gift, soon enough by four years later. Troy was a doctor who could hold his own, and Mick graduated from engineering school with his own little store. Meeting each other has made them better people, and they sailed into each other's hearts on this journey of life. Well, that's it for this installment. This drama also ends here. It's a very cowsy subdrama with just the right amount of ambiguity. Whether it's a doctor and a writer, or a doctor and a coffee shop owner, everyone found their own love. It's not about money. It's not about career. It's not about status. Because love is love. Well, that's it for today's video. If there's anything you'd like to say, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you for watching and for your support, and we'll see you in the next installment.